Welcome to Excel Magic Trick 1126. Hey, if you want to download this workbook 1123 to 1126, click on the link below the video. Hey, in this video here, we have name, start, and number of days. And we need to populate the word training for the days that people are in training. So if I have min starting on 6 slash 20 for five days, we need it to automatically show 625. That's the end day. And all the way at the end of our month, it needs to split apart the training. They need to occur on work days that are not a weekend or a holiday. All right, let's see how to do this. We'll go back to 1126. All right, so the first thing is we have a start and a number of days, so we need to get the end date. I'm going to use workday.international. In the last couple of videos, we saw networkdays.international. This .international extension came in in 2010 and is awesome for certain types of weekends. So the start date, there it is, comma, the number of days. Now we have to be careful here. We want to include the start date. So we're actually going to have to subtract 1 from this 8 because it'll add extra days. It'll add one too many for our particular case because we're including this start date. So I'm going to subtract one. So that's the number of days. The weekend, we're going to use 11 for Sunday, comma, and holidays. There are our holidays, F4 to lock it. Close parentheses. This will actually deliver a serial number, the end of this project. I'm going to copy this down. Now, for any cell over here, we're in essence going to have to have a bunch of criteria. We're going to have to ask the question, is the date up at the top of the column header? Is it not a holiday or a weekend? We're also going to have to ask the question, is this date up at the top of the column greater than or equal to the start date and less than or equal to the end date? All right. We're going to use network days just like we have in the last couple of videos, dot international to figure out whether the column header is one of these weekends or a Sunday. So the start date is going to be the column header. And now we're going to have to copy this formula down and over. So I'm going to hit the F4 one two times to lock the row, but not the column. That way it's locked when I copy down. When I copied over, and move to Monday. 6 slash 22, comma, same for the end date. We're going to be looking at a single column header, F4 twice, comma, 11 for Sunday, comma, and then the holidays, these two F4 locked in all directions. Now that just will give me a 1 when it's a legitimate work day or a 0 when it's a weekend or a holiday. Control Enter. Double click and send it down and copy it all the way over. Now watch this. I'm just going to scroll all the way over. And before I click in the last cell here, I'm going to hold Shift. Now I'm going to hit F2 to activate the corner top cell. And to populate this all the way through, I'm going to hold Control and Enter. All right, so all that bit of the formula does is says, OK, this is a legitimate date to start. Now we're going to add two more bits of criteria. Again, we need some sort of logical indication when it's OK to put the word training here. All right, so that active cell in the upper corner, I'm going to hit F2. I have two more conditions I need. And actually, we're going to have uh, start with two more, and then we'll add one more after that. And function allows us to run multiple logical tests. Actually, come to the end here, comma. I have to ask the question, is the column header F412 to lock the row? Are you greater than or equal to the start date? Now notice, whereas this cell reference right here, the blue one, needs to be locked going down, this B7 needs to be locked on that B7 all the way across the columns. But when it moves down one, that 7 needs to move to an 8. So I'm going to hit the F412 three times and lock the column but not the row. And we have to ask the same question of the column header date, locked on the row. Are you less than or equal to the end date? Locked on the column D, but not the row. All right, so we have 1, 2, 
and three logical tests. Only when all three of those get a non-zero number or a true will the AND deliver a true. Now, I've edited this formula, and it's highlighted all the way out. So to populate it, I'm going to hold Control and Enter. All right, so now we're almost all the way there. It looks like we have our patterns of trues. And then we have some falses and then some continued trues for the one extra on 610. So that we can use in the AND function. The only problem is, right down here, if I clear this, we're going to get a num error. So we're going to have to do a couple things here. First, I'm going to use the if error. If error will run the actual entire function. When it's an error, you tell it what to put for if error. Otherwise, it'll just run it. So I'm going to comma. For the value if error, put double quote, double quote. That's an empty text string. It is considered something, but it will show nothing. All right, Control Enter and copy this down. So that hides that. But now we're going to get a bunch of trues and falses. Now I'm going to add one more, because I need to ask the question, is there a number in this cell right here? Actually, we're going to start. I'm going to put the fourth logical test right here. So watch, I'm going to cheat and type a comma. Now I have 4, 3, 2, and 1. I'm going to put a fourth test here. Is that a number? So is number logical formula? It just looks at a number and says it's a number true. Otherwise, it'll deliver false. This also needs to be locked as I copy to the side. So I'd hit F4 and lock the column reference, but not the row. All right, so that'll be our close parentheses on the is number. So there we go. Control Enter. Now, I, I didn't highlight all this, so watch this. I'm going to copy this. Coming all the way to the end. Before I click in the last cell, I'm going to hold Shift, click in, Control V. Always so many ways to do things. And it looks like that is working. So we have falses all the way across. Now. We can put that huge AND with four conditions into an IF. Remember, the logical test just needs one true or false. The AND is looking through four conditions. Delivering a true or false, that will work just fine. Comma, if it's true, comma, then we want in double quotes, training, in double quotes. Otherwise, the value of false, an empty text string. Look at that double quote, double quote. That's the syntax for show nothing. Control Enter, copy, and I'm going to scroll all the way over. I should have kept it highlighted the whole time. Before I click in that last cell, I'm going to hold Shift. And now that highlights, and now I'm going to Control V and paste it all the way over. That is just amazing. It looks like it's working all the way across. So for the entire month, we have our training period. So now I come over here and I enter min 620. And for five days, boom, there's the end date. I come to the end, and it is working. So that is a template for distributing trainings across a calendar for a particular month, given name, start, number of days. All right, uh, we'll see you next video.